This presentation is on facultative waste stabilisation ponds. We use the term primary facultative pond for facultative ponds that receive raw wastewater and secondary facultative pond for those receiving the effluent from an anaerobic pond or other settling device such as septic tanks or the solids interceptor tanks used in settled sewerage. Facultative ponds should be dark green in colour as there is a profuse growth in them of mainly motile microalgae. In a well-performing facultative pond, the algal concentration, expressed in terms of the main algal photosynthetic pigment, is around 500 to 2,000 micrograms of chlorophyll A per litre. In facultative ponds, there is a mutualistic relationship between the algae and the heterotrophic bacteria. The algae produce oxygen, which is used by the bacteria, and the bacteria produce carbon dioxide, which is used by the algae. There's a sludge layer in primary facultative ponds, and there's intense anaerobic digestion in this layer with copious biogas production. The BOD of a facultative pond effluent is mainly due to the algae in it, and this algal BOD is very different from normal wastewater BOD, and we'll come back to this shortly. These photomicrographs show some of the algae commonly found in facultative ponds. Chlamydomonas, Chlorella, Euglena, and Cenodesmus. Algae produce oxygen, but only during daylight hours. This means that there is a diurnal variation in the dissolved oxygen levels in the pond, and the figure on the slide shows this for two depths, 10 and 80 centimetres below the pond surface, and you can see that the diurnal variation is much greater at 10 centimetres than at 80 centimetres. As a result of algal photosynthesis, there is a diurnal variation of pH, as well as of dissolved oxygen. This is because when the algae are photosynthesizing rapidly, their CO2 demand exceeds its supply from bacterial metabolism and from the atmosphere. So carbonate and bicarbonate ions in the pond water dissociate to provide more CO2, but also hydroxyl ions, OH-, as shown by the equations on the slide. The CO2 is used by the algae, and the hydroxyl ions accumulate, so the pH rises. As a result, the in-pond pH can rise to above 9 or even above 10, and this is very important for the die-off of faecal bacteria. An in-pond pH of 9.4 and above is rapidly lethal to faecal bacteria, with the exception of Vibrio cholerae, which easily tolerates these high pHs, but fortunately it's quickly killed by the sulphides in anaerobic ponds. The wastewater depth in facultative ponds is somewhere between 1 and 2 metres, with 1.5 metres being the most common. Depths less than 1 metre aren't recommended, because there's the problem of rooted plants growing up through the pond, and they then provide a shaded habitat for mosquito breeding, which we certainly don't want. The length to breadth ratio of primary facultative ponds is 2 or 3 to 1, certainly no more than 3 to 1, as there would be significant sludge accumulation near the inlet, and these sludge mounds can eventually block the inlet. For secondary facultative ponds, the length to breadth ratio can be greater than 3 to 1, but it shouldn't be less than 2 to 1. So how do we design facultative ponds? There are quite a few design methods, but few of them are any good. The best is based on surface BOD loading, which is the amount of BOD applied to the facultative pond's surface area per day, and its units are kilos of BOD per hectare per day, and it's denoted by the symbol lambda s. So if the influent BOD Li is in milligrams per litre, which is the same as grams per cubic metre, the flow Q is in cubic metres per day, and the area A is in square metres, then lambda S equals 10 LIQ over A. We end up with a 10 in this equation, as there are 10 to the 3 grams in a kilogram, and 10 to the 4 square metres in a hectare. The value we use for lambda S depends on temperature, the design temperature we're using. The McGarry and Pescott equation for the maximum BOD loading rate on facultative ponds is lambda S equals 10 times 1.054 to the power T, where lambda S is in the rather unhelpful units of pounds of BOD per acre per day, and T is the design temperature in degrees Fahrenheit. Using SI units, their equation becomes lambda S equals 60 times 1.099 to the power T, where the units are now kilos per hectare per day and degrees Celsius. 
The McGarry and Pascot equation is really an envelope of failure. The figure on the slide shows the data points on which their equation was based. The black dots represent facultative ponds that were working OK, and the open circles represent failed ponds, ponds that had become anaerobic. However, the shape of the McGarry and Pascot equation is influenced very strongly by the group of failure points around zero degrees and the group of reportedly satisfactory ponds operating at very high BOD loading rates, above about 550 kilos per hectare per day. But we don't design ponds to operate at their point of failure, so we can't use the McGarry and Pescott equation for design, but we can use it as a benchmark for a design equation. And the best design equation to use is the Mara Global Design Equation. This states that the design value of lambda s is given by 350 times 1.107 minus 0 0.002 times t, all to the power t minus 25. In this equation, the term raised to, in this case, the power t minus 25, is not a simple Arrhenius constant, but a linear function of t. This was done to make the equation valid over a wide range of temperature, from 8 degrees to over 30 degrees, although there are a few places, if any, in the world where we would use a design temperature of over 30 degrees. This figure shows the McGarry and Pescott equation and the Mara equation, and you can see that there's a sufficient factor of safety in the Mara equation at all design temperatures. The mean hydraulic retention time, defined as V over Q, in facultative ponds should not be less than four days. So if its calculated value is less than four days, then we have to use a value of four days and recalculate the area, as shown on the slide, assuming a depth of 1.5 metres. McGarry and Pescott also looked at BOD removal in facultative ponds, and they found that BOD removal expressed in kilos per hectare per day was a linear function of the BOD loading rate, as shown by the equations on the slide. Their equation is lambda r equals 0.725 lambda s plus 10.75, and it's worth noting that the constant 10.75 is in fact close to zero. This figure shows the plot of McGarry and Pescott's data. BOD removal in kilos per hectare per day is on the y-axis, and BOD loading in the same units is on the x-axis, and you can see that the linear relationship is a very good one. We now usually obtain a relationship of the form lambda r equals a lambda s, where a is somewhere between 0.7 and 0.8, that is to say the BOD removal is around 70 to 80%. The effluent BOD data that McGarry and Pescod used were obtained from unfiltered samples, that is to say they included the BOD of the algae in the effluents. This raises the question, should we use filtered or unfiltered BOD for pond effluents? Unfiltered BOD includes the algal BOD and filtered BOD excludes it. We filter the effluent sample using the same filter paper as we use for measuring suspended solids. This will, of course, remove any non-algal suspended solids, but this introduces only a small error, as the algae contributes somewhere between 70 and 90% of the BOD in pond effluents. In the European Union, the quality of treated wastewaters is governed by the Urban Wastewater Treatment Directive, and this lays down a general BOD requirement of no more than 25 milligrams per litre, but for pond effluents, this is filtered BOD. Compliance with the directive's requirement for suspended solids is optional, except for ponds. Pond effluents have to have no more than 150 mg suspended solids per litre. So we have to ask the question, if this is OK in the European Union, why not in developing countries? This is always something that should be discussed with the local environmental regulator. This table gives the percentage BOD removals obtained at various BOD loadings from around 160 to nearly 600 kilos per hectare per day on primary facultative ponds in northeast Brazil at an in-pond temperature of around 25 degrees. Now these percentage BOD removals are all pretty good, so why was a design loading of 350 kilos per hectare per day chosen for 25 degrees and not a higher one? We chose 350 kilos per hectare per day as the design loading for 25 degrees on the basis of the stability of the algal population in the pond as we found that at this temperature the algal biomass concentration measured as chlorophyll A 
became very low when the BOD loading was above about 400 kilos per hectare per day. As shown in these results from our primary facultative ponds in northeast Brazil. And they tell us that what happens in the pond is at least as important as its effluent quality.